Hey guys, and welcome to the latest episode from Just The Basics. In today's episode, we're going to look at creating realistic cliffs, rocks, and anything with a rocky surface, really. Now, I know what you're thinking. My sample rate is really low. I should turn it up. In all seriousness, you're probably wondering why this video was titled as only taking one minute when the video goes for longer than that. Simply put, it's because there's a couple of add-ons we're going to look at downloading and a couple of techniques we're going to look at using, but basically once you understand how these processes work, it should take you no more than 60 seconds to get a realistic result. It's that simple. First of all, we're going to need brushes. Now brushes are something you use when sculpting an object or altering the geometry of something in Blender. Usually when you hear that you think of pricey, but we're going to look at some free alternatives. Second, we're going to need some realistic textures. As well, when it comes to realistic textures, often these can be expensive, but we're going to look at some free options for that as well. Thirdly, we're going to need a material add-on to help add our materials in simply and quickly to save as much time as possible. And finally, we're going to need some HDRs for realistic lighting. And we're going to provide some for the, or some of those for free in the description. So you don't need to even really stress about that one. Now today I'm going to be using a website called www.blendswap.com. Now this is a fantastic website because it has loads of free content for Blender users. All you need to do is to sign up, register by creating a username and a password and I think you know the drill. Once you've done that, we can go over to this option here and click search. Now what we're going to look for is brushes. And the brush pack we're going to be using is actually about the seventh one down. It's a fantastic pack. Photo scanned rock brushes provided by Rubber Duck. So thank you so much for creating such a fantastic pack. And it's got um, yeah, a CC0 license, so you're free to use it in your own work. So sign up and download that and save it in a place you can access easily. So that's our brushes taken care of. Next, we're going to need some realistic textures. The website I like to use is polygon.com. I'm not endorsed by them, I wish I was, so I just love using their um, products though because they're so fantastic. So once again, you can actually um, sign up, create a free account and have access to their free textures and even get a trial where you are able to download some of their paid textures for free. For example, to create a rock texture, we can go to um, create an account, then go to textures, click on textures and then go down and select rock and we'll notice that there's an option for one of the rocks being free and that is the jagged cliff. Make sure to save this in a safe location that you can access relatively easily. Now, what about our material add-on? Why do we even need that? Well basically when it comes to materials you're probably familiar that in Blender we need a lot of different uh, images to create a realistic material. We need one to provide the bumps, one for just the color, one for the shininess or reflectiveness and so on. So basically, Polygon has a fantastic add-on. If we just go to help, we can look and straight away we have tools and add-ons. Polygon's add-on is actually called the Material Converter add-on and it's really great because it, in fact, it just imports all your materials um, simply, quickly and easily into Blender. So what we can do is we can just go click on Polygon Material Converter add-on for Blender and then click Download Polygon Material Converter for Blender 2.79. And once again, save that in a safe file, but do not unzip it because to read add-on files, Blender actually needs them to be kept as a zip. And like I said, um, all the HDRs will be available in the description, so you can download them there. Let's jump into Blender with that being said. And first of all, let's enable this add-on. We can go to File, User Preferences, make sure we're in Add-ons, and click Install Add-on from File. Then we can navigate to where we've downloaded or saved uh, this file and just double click on that and click install add-on from file. Now I've already installed it so I don't need to click this again but once you've done that just make sure you click save user settings. Now that we've done that we can get started on creating our simple but realistic rock effect. So to do that I'm going to delete the default cube. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and hit shift A and add in a plane. Now I'm going to scale this up by hitting S and then 1, 0 to scale it up 10 times larger than it was. And then I'm going to hit R, X, 9, 0 to rotate it 9 degrees on the X axis. I'm going to hit S and then Z to scale it down a little bit. And then I'll drag it up a bit and then I'm going to hit Control A to apply the scale. So we can navigate over to the Modifiers tab, select Add Modifier and we're going to add a multi-resolution modifier. What this does is it allows us to modify or subdivide our plane without actually modifying the geometry of it. So I'm going to go ahead and click subdivide, 
maybe seven or eight times and I'm going to go and to fix this um, bending of the corners or I'm turning my square rectangle into an oval we're going to hit tab and then hit shifty and drag out towards the top left hand corner and then left click now we can hit tab to exit out of edit mode so what we can do now is we can go ahead and import our brushes that we downloaded so make sure you remember where you saved the brush pack from BlendSwap and we can go ahead and click file append and we can navigate to where our blender file folder is which should be called rock underscore brushes now select that and select brushes and then hit A to select them all and click append from library now that we've done that we can go ahead and switch from object mode in the bottom left hand corner to sculpt mode now we can select a brush and you'll see that we have all our imported rock brushes for some reason my icons aren't showing up right now but maybe they will <laughs> eventually so what you can do is you can just select any one of these and I'll just run over a few couple or a couple of settings briefly. I usually like to turn uh, symmetry lock off and I also like to make sure my stroke is set from um, not space but rather anchored. So now what we can do is we can just click and drag to draw some rocky surface. And you can see it's still a bit pixely. I might just go switch from sculpt mode back to object mode and enable smooth shading but it's still a bit too pixely so what I might do is I might just subdivide one more time and that looks good. Now I can continue drawing and you can see how simple and quick it is to create this realistic rocky terrain. Just literally a matter of click and dragging and if I want to add in a bit of variety I can select one of the other brushes and just move that around a little bit till I'm happy with it. So now that we've done that let's go ahead and give it a material. You can see how simple and quick it was to create that. So now we can switch from sculpt mode back to object mode and go over to our materials and straight away we'll see our polygon material converter. So select this little folder icon and navigate to the folder where you save your materials. I'll do the same with mine. So I'll just navigate. I've got a folder called textures and I'll click accept. And you see I've got two textures in here. I'm just going to go ahead and select load two materials so I can have a look and see which one I like best. I'll select this bottom one rock dark 004 3k and click apply selected material now it's given me a warning that there's no UV layers detected so what I can do is hit tab to go to edit mode and can see that our plane is still perfectly flat with no geometry and select U smart UV project and click OK and that unwraps immediately which is fantastic so now let's go ahead and hit shift Z to preview this in rendered view and it's looking pretty fantastic I think all we need is some realistic lighting so to add that we can go ahead to our world settings and select use nodes under surface and change color to environment texture and click open and here we can navigate to where we have our HDR saved that's the one and you can choose um, which one you want to use I'm going to use this one called forest.exr it's actually provided with blender and now let's have a look and see how that looks and that I think is looking very very realistic I might just go over and split my view drag this out and go to UV image editor hit tab and I'm just gonna s actually I might change that to just preview it so I might just widen this wrong way make it scale it on the Y just to unwrap it a bit better and I'm happy with that so now all we need to do is go to our camera hit N and just click lock camera to view and so then we can choose to move it wherever we feel fitting might get a nice close up and I might just go to my render settings and check border so I'm not over clocking or over using my GPU I'm just going to select my camera go to camera settings turn the aperture value up to something like 0.2 and then drag the distance up till I'm focused on a bit of rock somewhere that looks pretty good and then I might go to our scene layer settings, click denoising, make sure I got that checked and that's basically it. So now let's go ahead and see if it really takes 60 seconds to create something this realistic. So I'm going to go once again, add in just a plane, scale that up 10 times, rotate it, scale it down by in half, and just make sure I set it to scale, okay. just unwrap it, make sure I've got my multi-resolution modifier on subdivide that probably nine times switch back to sculpt mode select my brush maybe a different brush to that
go back to object mode, go to my material, make sure I've got one there, and I'll just apply that, and go to camera, move that down to where I'm happy, make sure I check smooth shading, and there you have it. 60 seconds, and we have a pretty good looking rock. I'm very happy with that. So guys, if you liked the tutorial, make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And if you would like to request a tutorial, leave a comment as well. Thank you so much for the requests we've had coming in. We've had several come in, which is really awesome. If I haven't made your request yet, it's probably because I'm still trying to figure out how to do it. But don't worry, we're not going to overlook any requests. We're going to do our best to bring a tutorial on each one of those. So stay tuned. Well, thanks guys for watching. This has been another episode of Just the Basics.